This is Rich from Mountain Slayer Garage. This is the new video for the 2022-2023 season. I'm going to start it off this year by not really doing a how-to video or anything, but a little video on how to explain the Polaris P22 clutch. Just got a notice by Polaris via email last week. Do not ride the snowmobile because it can have catastrophic failure. Um, this is a copy of the email here. This, this pertains to the boost sleds for the 2022 year. It came with the new P22 clutch and apparently that P22 clutch is having some failures, which I kind of heard a little bit about last year, but never really saw them. In this video, I've seen a lot on the internet and social media, people kind of wondering what this really is and what's really coming apart. We're gonna kind of go through that, why it's happening, how the new clutch compares to the old clutch. And uh, so people can really kind of understand it when they get their machine or when they're talking about this. So, but this is my notice I got from my Polaris. Like I said, just boost sleds, only ones that got this clutch. This is all it pertains to, it says, that uh, the Boost uh, RMK or Chaos snowmobiles, they have been determined that under certain operating conditions, some snowmobiles may have increased risk of primary clutch bolt failure. Certain primary clutch bolt failures can cause components to be separated from the unit, posing a potential injury hazard to consumers. The clutch in any vehicle is a really compact piece of machinery. Um, usually they weigh a fair amount. These things are spinning at high speed six, seven thousand, eight thousand RPMs. If this thing comes apart, it can cause some serious damage to your machine or some serious injury because you got parts of metal pieces flying apart, kind of like shrapnel, um, ripping things apart. And if one of these pieces happen to hit you, it can cause some serious damage, which is kind of one of the things they're worried about. And we'll show you into some detail what's coming apart on the P22. So this video has kind of helped you understand that. And really to understand the P22, why it's coming apart and how, you really kind of got to understand the P85 that the P22 is going to replace. The P85 clutch has pretty much been on every mountain sled for many, many years. It's been a great clutch. It's been quite reliable. If you maintain it right, it can last a really long time. Parts are plentiful. They're pretty inexpensive. It's easy to tune. So it's been a really, really good clutch. It's the lightest weight clutch on the market right now of any of the manufacturers. So it really is a good clutch. Um, the new clutch, the main benefit with it, the P22, has been that it's got that roller bearing on it that stops you from having to adjust your belt deflection all the time. The, it, the belt deflection is automatically adjusted, and that's kind of the new kind of cool feature with the P22 clutch. Articat's had that on our clutches since 2018, and it's really kind of a cool thing to have the belt tight all the time. There are some benefits to that, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. We're just going to talk about the P22 versus the P85. So this is a P85 right here. Um, we're going to talk about this first, um, kind of how this is held together, why it's been such a durable clutch compared to the P22, and then what components on this hold it together so well that it's not coming apart like the P22 clutch does. So let's turn to this clutch, and we'll show you how this clutch works and uh, the parts in it, and uh, go from there. All right, so first we're going to show you, if you don't know, the difference that you can do by looking at it between the P85 clutch, which is this one, and the P22 clutch, which is on the boost. So the P85 looks like this. It's got a solid cover with no holes on it. It's a pretty much looked like this for many, many years. And uh, so that's how you can tell a P85 clutch. Now the difference between the, that and the P22 clutch, is you can see this clutch looks quite a bit different. It's got a bunch of holes in the cover. It's not a full cover that goes all the way around. It's got these cuts out of it. And, and it's quite a bit different looking. So that's the P22 clutch. So I just want you to be able to know the difference between the two if you don't already. All right, so let's look at a P85 clutch and see what holds it together. So as a clutch, I'm gonna try and explain this as basically as I can, just for people that don't 100% understand it. So when this clutch sits on your machine like this, the belt goes in here. At rest when your engine at the idle, it's gonna sit like this. As your engine revs up, this clutch is going to close like this. So this is called the stationary sheath because it just spins, it doesn't move. This is called the movable sheath because it goes in and out like this as your clutch shifts from, this is low gear and then shifts into high gear. That's how everything moves on this. And the belt is going to ride up here in high gear and it's going to stay down here in low gear. And what pushes that back and forth is, usually there's a spring in here that keeps this in this position. These springs are pretty stiff springs. When it's sitting like this, this spring has depending on which spring it has, 150 pounds of force. When it's compressed all the way, some of these springs have over 300 pounds of force trying to force this back open. So the thing that closes this clutch is your clutch spins like this. You have clutch weights in here. The 
clutch weight sits here. As the clutch spins, this moves out like this with centrifugal force, pushes on this, and this is called the spider in here. And that's kind of how your clutch operates, is the weights push on it, open it in and out. I'm just going to take this cover off because it's easier. So now the cover is going to move easier. So this is what happens. Your clutch cover is constantly going like this. And what happens with the spring in here, and this, this spring is all the way compressed in this comp position. When you let off the gas, this spring pushes this open pretty much with its full 300 pounds of force. And so it's pushing this clutch like this. See how it's snapping like that? What's happening when this comes back like this, what's stopping this from moving any further is this spider. This, the spider, you can see here it's threaded on. It's threaded on this way. When you put this on, you put a bunch of Loctite on here, plus you torque this thing down to like 300 pounds of force, which is really, really tight. If you ever try to take one of these apart, it's really hard to get apart because it's so tight. And not only that, to keep holding this in place to make sure this never moves, there's, there's a lock nut that also has Loctite, and you also tighten that down to about 280 to 300 pounds. So this thing never comes apart on a Polaris. It's been a pretty amazingly reliable unit and just the threads on there just keep this whole unit together. So we're going to go over to the P80, the P22 and kind of show you what's coming apart on this and why that's coming apart and not coming apart on the old clutch. Okay, now the P22 clutch has this clutch bolt in here and I've already loosened it. It comes apart with a 60 Torx bit, kind of the same Torx bit as an Articat. Now you can see that's a pretty big bolt. And what's happening, the spider in this whole movable sheet, it's not held together or screwed together like the P85 is. It's just on with, it's held on by these splines, and so it can just pop off. So you're kind of asking yourself, what holds this giant mass of metal on here? I mean, this thing probably weighs, I would guess, seven or eight pounds. So what holds this on is just the clutch bolt. Only the clutch bolt holds this on, this little bolt. And what's happening, as we showed you on know, the other clutch, is this moves in and out. This part of the clutch pounds against this clutch bolt. Every time you let off the gas, this comes in and out like this, and just pounds on the head of this clutch bolt. Eventually, you're going to have a failure where the bolt breaks off, and this, this part just goes flying off or spinning off into here, and you have a clutch failure, and you're left out in the middle of nowhere with no way to drive your sled. So that's what's breaking. This clutch bolt is breaking because it's the only thing holding this giant mass of metal on after this goes in and out and hammers on this bolt all day long, probably thousands of times in a day in one ride or even more. So after some time of riding this, you're gonna have a failure. This thing's just gonna break off. I mean, it's pretty big. It's probably three-eighths of an inch or a half inch in diameter, but still it can't just withstand that pounding force of this pounding on it all day long. And so that's what's breaking and why it's breaking. And if we come over here, to the TV, I'll show you one that broke last year. Here, the clutch bolt broke off. Um, that's what kind of leaves you with, kind of like the same thing that's on my machine over there. And so that's why Polaris sent out this notice of not to ride these until they can fix that, because if you have that seven, eight pound chunk of metal flying off at 8,000 RPM, it can cause some serious damage to your machine or to any person that happens to be standing by it if that comes flying out the side of the side panel. So. We don't know yet how Polaris is going to remedy this problem or fix it. Um, just based on the design of it, I don't know if putting any kind of a stronger bolt in there is going to help, or I don't know how they can. They may just have to go back for a little while and replace everyone's clutches with P85 clutches until they can figure it out. And it also begs the question, when the 2023 sleds come out that are supposed to have the P22 clutch on it, are those going to have a different clutch? Are they going to come with the P22, the P85? or uh, how they're going to fix this problem in the future because I don't see a real easy way of fixing that bolt when you've got that kind of forces pounding on it all day long. But hopefully the Polaris engineers can fix, figure something out, fix this thing. So we'll, by the time the snow starts flying in November and December, we've got our boost sleds and our, R, and our R9 sleds and we can go out and ride these things. So hopefully this is helpful and help me understand why this recall was, why this stop and ride. Notice was sent out from Polaris to not ride your snowmobile. It was awesome that this happened in the middle of the summer and not in the middle of the winter when we're all out trying to ride these things. So tune in next time. We'll have some other videos. We're also going to be at Heydays in a month. Um, we'll have some video from there and uh, some inf interesting stuff from Heydays if you've never been. It's a pretty fun and cool place. So uh, 
you have any questions or comments, get a hold of me, and we'll see you next time at Mountain Slayer Garage. <laughs>